Hello friends, my name is Tia Grubb. I'm a horror writer by day and a witch 24 seven, and I'm happy to be your guide. Ready? Deep breath in, deep breath out. Let us begin. Today's video is the second half of the Energy Work Basics 101. Today we will be discussing push-pull and energy interpretation on a very basic level. You will need to know the basics of grounding and meditation to be able to move forward in push-pull and energy interpretation. Push-pull and energy interpretation is still considered basics but it has to have the foundation of grounding and meditation that has been practiced. And as this series goes on, we will get into more advanced techniques. So we're going to begin with reading energy. It is simply where you're able to interpret someone's aura or place or thing or whatever you would like to see their energetic fingerprint. It's Sounds fairly basic. You use your third eye or whatever your sixth sense is that you define. Some people don't see with their third eye but have feelings, the hair on their arms. Some people even smell energies. And whatever you use as your sixth sense to be able to read the energies off people, places, things, etc. So how that happens is through grounding and meditation, you're able to clean your own aura out and have your energy stabilized. So it's not blinding you from whatever you're trying to interpret or read off of. That's why we go to those fundamentals first. What you gain in reading auras is you're able to see someone's feelings, their truth, um, ailments, illnesses, or if they have attachments, or just to be able to read a room. Also to read a place um, so you know whether or not you're safe, if there's any entities there, especially if you're a ghost botherer or ghost hunter. And being able to read people's auras will also show you, or at least give you a hint at their intentions. With places, it's history. Um, is this a sanctuary? Is this a dangerous place? And if you do a lot of exploring, which I have done in the past, it comes in very handy. Now, you might think that you have to go practice this by going to a graveyard or something like that. But in truth, graveyards are actually energetically very quiet places. Unless some kind of tragedy has happened in the graveyard or other people have been casting in the graveyard, they're actually quite peaceful. And that's why a lot of people that too tend to practice tend to like to be in graveyards because it's so quiet and so soothing. There are rarely ghosts in a graveyard. But there is always an exception to a rule. With this, we come into interpretations of if you're looking at ghost energy, spirits, shadows, and entities, and the void. Now, we'll get into that in a later time, but this is what you're working up to. We're going to begin with reading people's auras and objects. A very practical way to begin this is to lower the lights. I mean, just, you know, um, like you lower the lights to what you would set as if you're going to watch a movie. You want just enough light. And I think it has something to do with the size of the pupil. I'm not sure. But lower light, it tends to be easier to see someone's aura or energies. That's why you tend to see ghosts and things like that when there is low light. Our eyes are just in that tween, that in-between place where we can kind of see the veil just a little bit. And in later classes, I'll probably go into more of the science of it or the science of it. So you turn down the lights in the room to where you can kind of see everything, but it's still kind of dark, kind of like a movie theater, maybe a little bit brighter. And when you're looking at someone, look past them, look gently past them. 
Imagine if you're looking at something that's just like an inch behind them and relax your eyes. And just keep that practice of that grounding meditation where you're still, where your energies are still, where your mind is still. Relax your mind and look just past them and let your eyes relax. And over time, some see color, some get a sense for it. It just takes a little bit of time and a little bit of practice. You can also do this with objects. This is my baby. I've had this forever. And I would suggest that if you have an item that has been with you for a very long time, you can practice looking at that item that has been with you or been with somebody else for a long time, like a necklace they tend to wear every day. And you can practice seeing the energy off this object as well. And as time goes on, you'll be able to interpret what you're seeing just a little bit better. I see colors very vividly. And I've learned that some colors mean certain things. Some of it kind of falls in line with the universal understanding when you read other witch books. And while others mean something different to me, something personally different, my mind interprets it differently. But as a general rule, if there's black streaks or things like that, that means that there's either an illness or an attachment, something happening in that energy. So I suggest that you do that, practicing along with your grounding and meditation, relaxing your eyes and seeing the energies around you. And as we move forward and you learn to see those energies of passive things, more advanced things, you'd be able to see creatures of the tween, ghosts, um, wraiths, shadows, voids. But uh, you're not ready for that. Let's do the basics first. Now we move on to push-pull. This is the active movement of energy outside of yourself. If you've been practicing your grounding, your meditation, and the ability to interpret energy, this is the obvious next step. And in grounding, you've learned to move your energy up and down. Meditation, you've learned how to control it. And interpretation is to see what kind of energies you're messing with and to be able to see the energies you're putting out. Push-pull can be used for healing, charging items, and shielding and defense. With healing, you learn how to use energy with the chakras. Chakras are an, another advanced class that we'll be taking later on. But for now, for the basics of just practice, it is um, bouncing the chakras. It can be used for healing auric issues, tears, wounds, um, pranic, uh, which is where you use your own energy onto somebody else to heal them, and distance energy. I'm sending you white light. I'm sending you this energy. We do that a lot over Facebook. Sending good vibes, basically. Charging items is like when you're giving a gift to somebody from your heart. You put your love and energy into that gift and you're giving it to them. So whether you realize it or not, you're pushing your energy into that item and giving it to somebody to either heal them, to make them happy, whatever energy you're feeling when you gave them that gift or bought the gift, you're giving it to them. It can also be used to send curses and negative energy as well, but I would not recommend that for any bigot. You can also use push pull to enhance to put energy into your witchy tools um, items that you're using oils herbs along with your will you're putting your energy into these items shielding and defense this is i consider a basic especially if you're going to begin on this path shielding of personal space your personal bubble and shielding of your home your car, anything that you feel like needs extra protection, you would use push-pull as a basic to get that done. Again, it's a little bit more advanced and we'll go into that more next time. And this all stems from the ball of energy and meditation and the movement of grounding. In the next advanced classes, it'll be what we use for casting circle and, and the very advanced you can also use the manipulation of energy as a glamour. 
but there's a little bit more to it than push-pull. But we'll get into that. Now you may ask yourself, what do I need to do shielding for? There are a lot of people and beings or whatever you want to call them that feed on our energies and our emotions. And I want to say that our emotions and our energies are not necessarily the same thing, but they do affect each other a lot. There are three types of practitioners that work with energy, empaths, psychic vampires, and projectors. Empaths tend to be sponges. They tend to absorb the energy in the room. They absorb the feelings in the room. And those are the people that tend to need grounding and meditation the most. They go into a room where there has been a fight and they absorb that energy where just five minutes ago they were in a good mood. They absorb that energy and become angry and they lash out and they don't know where it's come from usually because they're untrained. There's a lot of naturals out there. Children tend to be natural empaths. Some of us grow out of it or become good at defense, whether we realize it or not. But a lot of empaths tend to be affected by the people around them more than others. And it's quite tiring. A lot of introverts have been accused of being empaths. The way you deal with that is grounding, meditation, and shielding. The symptoms would be overwhelmed with emotion that you don't understand where it's coming from. Uh, you're reflecting the emotion that you are seeing. If someone's crying and sad and then you feel that crying and sad, you would be considered an empath. And I would strongly encourage you to work on your grounding meditation and shielding and boundaries. Psychic vampires. I can speak from this from a personal place. Um, I've done some things I'm not proud of when I was younger, but it is skills that I have learned. So I speak from a place of experience when it comes to psychic vampires. They are not the ones that are taking emotions from people. They are actually taking energy from people. They are the most skilled at energy manipulation and push-pull. They feed off the natural energy that one has. Doesn't matter the emotions. Yes, anger gives off energy, but it may not be the right energy and it doesn't taste very good. Psychic vampires tend to be very sexual creatures. That is the best kind of energy that you can feed off. They pull the energy from the person into themselves. Not all psychic vampires know what they're doing. It just comes to them naturally. Like musicians, people that like to perform, to be on a stage, they pull that energy into themselves. That is a psychic vampire at its basic definition. Others have people that will give them the energy. Others will go to a dance floor and people are giving off that energy dancing. Others go to crowds like the mall or go to a club and they feed off the excess energy in the space without taking it directly from any one person. More advanced psychic vampires have other techniques and can be very dangerous. But most of the time it is consensual between people. But there's always a few people that uh, like to have a good time at any cost. The symptoms would be tiredness, even feeling like almost like a spirit tired. You tend to be infatuated with the psychic vampire that is taking that energy or getting that energy from you. It does make kind of a connection, a, a string between you. So as sometimes a psychic will say you have a string with somebody, that's not necessarily always a good thing. But again, that's where you learn how to interpret energy. To me, the most dangerous person that works with energy is the projectors. Most of them, if not all of them, have no idea what they're doing. 
and a lot of them think they're empaths when they're not. These are the people that walk into a room and bring the emotional energy with them. If they're in distress, they're the type of people that always have chaos, that always have some kind of drama going on, that gossip a lot, that has that negative energy around them at all times. Instead of sucking up energy, they're actually getting their negativity and they push it out to other people. And then they feed off the drama, the energy of the drama. This to me is different from a psychic vampire. Psychic vampires are about energy and draining energy where projectors are about emotional manipulation and sucking in emotional energy. So projectors will say they're the empaths because I'm picking up this energy because you're crying. But what they don't realize is that they were just upset and they pushed that negativity onto somebody, probably an empath, and they're feeding off that turmoil. They also like to ramp it up. They want you to get as upset and angry as you are. And it's a feeding back and forth. Like they'll give you a little bit, you make it a little bit bigger, you give it back to them, they make it a little bit bigger and it keeps going back and forth while you're feeding that ball of energy. And they don't really know they're doing it. They may be addicted to the drama, but they are actually addicted to that energy. And they will do it until you are tapped out and they will blame you for the drama. But also, on the other hand, there are some projectors that are projecting positive energy. Not as many because it's kind of harder to push positive energy because it tends to be a little lighter, less substantial than negative energy. Negative energy is very heavy and very material. So that person that brings the light in the room. When people say you light up a room, you're projecting your light onto other people to heal other people. You bring people up and their positive energy feeds into you. And it's a beautiful cycle that happens between you and other people. But if you take it to a negative place, the projectors that want that drama and the sadness and the fighting and, you know, they'll tend to get into abusive relationships because they want that intensity that they want to feed off of and claim that they are a victim, but they tend to seek that out. Whether they realize what they are doing or not, that they are feeding on that emotional energy. Now there's ways around that and you can become a person that projects positivity or you can learn how to get energy in healthier ways. The symptoms of being around somebody like that is that you often feel confused by how you feel. You, you don't understand why you're so mad and so angry and why you hate that person because you don't even know that person. Um, chaos. You, you seem lost. You can't even think clearly because you're swimming in emotions. Treatments? Avoidance. Don't be around people like that that bring that negativity. And they will feed you until you have nothing left to give. Set up boundaries with your will. Again, shielding, which we will go into in a practice later on. Grounding, shielding, meditation. I'm going to keep repeating that, and those are the basics that you need to know. In the next practical, I will show you how to start to read energies and how to do push-pull on a very basic level. Thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas for something that you would like me to put in the Witchery series, or even my writing videos, or whatever else, put it in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the bell if you want to see my uploads, subscribe, and whatever else we need to do on YouTube. If you're curious about my writing, my life, my Witchery series, and whatever else, check out the rest of the videos on my YouTube channel. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Tia M. Grubb. I talk about my writing on Facebook mostly, and Instagram is whatever strikes my fancy. Till next time, be safe, be healthy, blessed be.